this edition of the Mike On Podcast. This time next week, the voting will be over and results will be awaited. But as we wait with bated breath, there are those who still believe the elections have the likelihood of being rigged and manipulated. But how? The president has given reassuring words on leaving a legacy of a free, fair, and credible elections. He reiterated these in his latest national broadcast on the Naira Notes matter. While the president insists that the policy will stem rigging, some state governors have vehemently opposed it. Citizens are divided along these lines on the forthcoming elections. While some believe that the elections will still be rigged, others believe the president's words should be trusted. What seems to be an irony in this whole issue is the fact that the opposing parties are members of the ruling party. Can we take the words of the president on conducting free and fair elections to the bank? If there are plans to rig the elections, how and how can we stop this? Join Sean Okimbaloye on the MyCom podcast as he hosts guests for conversation on these issues. The 60% of Us series. From vote buying, electoral violence, and voter intimidation to the old trick of ballot box snatching the Nigerian electoral system is not perfect but evolving with a lot room for improvement. You are welcome to the Micron Podcast, the 60% of our series, the unconventional show designed to have young Nigerians have their say, especially on the fast approaching 2023 elections. By this time next week, Many of you would have voted and polls would have closed in most polling units across the country. It would be too early to call it by Saturday evening, but a percentage of the poll results would have been on the INEC portal, the IREV. Watch Channel's television for the comprehensive minute-by-minute minute, minute minute update of the elections. Now, before we talk about election results, let's talk about the essential voting process which uh, must not be compromised. This has informed today's conversation how politicians plan to rig and manipulate the elections. Uh, their plans to rig the 2023 elections. Uh, INX anti-rigging mechanisms such as the use of technology strong enough to stop election riggers Will vote buying be less rampant? After, after all, there is shortage of cash, the buying instrument in circulations. Are the Nigerian electoral laws strong enough to curtail the excesses and the antics of the political class? We will be dissecting and providing answers to these issues and more, and so many questions on your mind. Of course, I know. You're joining us across all the platforms that are available to you. And this is the interesting part of this conversation on Mike on Podcast. You have the opportunity uh, to be able to weigh in on these issues, uh, express your views, be independent in your mind, be civil, and be able to look towards a better Nigeria for all. And tonight, let's get started with our conversation. I'm, I'm being joined by um, one of uh, uh, respected Nigerian election observers in the country. Uh, Mr. Bukola Idowu is an election observer. He joins me right here in our studio. They've done a lot of work in looking at the situation of the country as, as preparations of uh, the election is in top gear. Thank you so much, uh, Bukola, for joining us. Thank you so much. Good to be here. And I know that we have uh, Stanley Okechuku, is an analyst. Uh, he does a lot of data crunching and uh, he joins us virtually. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Stanley, for joining us. All right, I know. Thank you so much, Stanley. Uh, well, we'll be also, uh, we'll, we will be joined by a former INEC resident electoral commissioner in Akwaibom State, Mr. Mike Iginin. Hello, Mr. Iginin. 
Yeah, good evening, Sean. Uh, thank you so much. It's good to see you, Mr. Iginin. I know you've done a lot of work and extensive um, uh, advocacy on uh, this election. Uh, but you told me that you, you have an appointment. So l let me come straight to you. And uh, no dilly darling, we just hit and go straight to the point uh, tonight. Uh, let me start first and foremost. 2019 was the last time we had ele an election of this nature. Give us a sense of where we are at today. Is it possible to rig election in Nigeria of today? Thank you, Sean, for having me. I think the first um, good news uh, that we must give to the Nigerian people electorate is the fact that, unlike in 2015 or 2019 that you reference, and indeed, unlike all the elections we've had since um, 2003 down to 2019, the statutory provisions of the acts that have supported election rigging and manipulation, section 49, section 50, section 49 that gave on Trump and power to presiding officers. Sorry, me, me, sorry, Mr. Again, apologies to uh, to cut in. Can you come on video? We would like to, because of uh, those who are viewing these podcasts on uh, on YouTube and other on Instagram and other platforms. Is it possible that you come on video? Yeah, I should. Yes, I, I don't know what happened. Um, let me see. Okay, video rights. Okay, great. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay. Can yes, you thank can, you very can you see me now? Yeah, I can see you very well. Oh, great, great. Please go yes. ahead. Apologies to cut into your line of thought. Right. So the the point I made was that um, 2023 election is going to be a different kind of election that we have not seen in our country before. And that is on account of the fact that the statutory provisions that were contained in the 2010 Electoral Act that have now been repealed, that supported election rigging and manipulation, have all been repealed after 20 years of the call for the repeal of those sections. Section 49 gave an ultramar power to a presiding officer that whenever he's satisfied, that is the language of the act, that he can he issue a ballot to a potential voter. That was the genesis of politicians having to buy warehouse permanent voters card, of course, in connivance with unscrupulous INOC officials. Then, of course, you have section 53 of the then act repealed that um, based computation of voting on total number of registered voters. Now, with that, it encouraged people to um, uh, snatch ballot boxes, ballot papers, and thumb printing that you witness, such that in a polling unit where you had 500 registered voters and actually 150 actually came for the election that were accredited because you have an extra 350 and the law is based on total number of registered voters and not actually those who came who were accredited who are actually 150 do not have another margin of 350 that people could turn print and all of that that was the law before but that law has given way to Section 51 of the current Act, which now based computation on total number of those who were actually accredited. So accreditation is now the basis of computation. Now recall that this particular section that supported rig that Section 53, that was the section where at the end of the poll, the press, um, what they call the party agents where they embark what we call organized crime at the polling unit. If, uh, at the end of the poll, a presiding officer ought to have canceled across all the, what do you call it, the, the unused ballots. But because you have that section that allow for them to do all those type of things, at the end of the poll, a party agent will now sit down together to do what we call sharing. They will now share 
the the unused ballot papers, all right, to read the election. But today, that section is no longer available. Now, finally, on the statutory provisions that sub fuel election rigging and manipulation is the former section 68 of the repeat act under that section 68 it defies even the rules of principal and agency if um, a returning officer that had been appointed by INEC and ad hoc staff section 68 say that whoever he or she declares or returns at the end of the poll even irrespective of what happened in terms of the polling unit at the World Relations Center, the local government, that such return shall not be challenged, cannot be reviewed by INEC, except only in the tribunal. So that was what encouraged politicians to always, you know, either a gunpoint, coerce returning officers, as you saw in 2019, where some people who are seated in the Senate today, they came to that Senate on account of undue electoral process, where a, a university don cried to the whole world that he was under duress, that he was under duress to make a declaration. That declaration, of course, those who did that, they were sure because they said when they get to tribunal, they will get it from the court. And of course, that was what happened. So we have such people seated there today. The good news is that under the current 2022 Electoral Act, that section has been repealed. You now have Section 65 of the 2022 Electoral Act. This section stipulates that where a return is made involuntary, it's not voluntary, that is made outside the due process of, of the election that INEC has within seven days to review such illegal declaration. This is the legal template that is now supporting INEX innovation and processes that have been designed to address historical challenges of election service delivery, particularly for a period of 20 years, starting from 2002. That is why this current election that is coming up on the 25th of February and on the 11th of March, respectively, these elections are going to be in a class of their own because Section 47 now fully supports the use of the beavers, which is in a follow-up of the use of the car reader. Now, the use of the beavers is compulsory. With the use of the beavers, now you no longer, unlike in 2019 or 2015, no more incident form. Because the beavers have been designed in a, it's a that's what it called, it's a biomodal process. It's a dual process. In the unlikelihood that in the unlikely event that just at least one finger of a voter could not be confirmed of course we have to do what we call the facial accreditation you have your iris all of that that is what the commission has done so nobody can avoid the beepers therefore no more incident form no situation of voting on behalf of people who have even died as was the case in 2019 in different parts of the country. This is the new thing that has been brought about. Furthermore, and perhaps far more important, is the fact that with the introduction of the INEC result viewing portal, at the end of the poll, at the polling unit, by virtue of section 60, subsection 4 and 5, the presiding officer under the law compulsorily must, after entry the total number of accreditation entry the scores of the party making the announcement give the duplicate to the party agent the party agent on their own we have uh, first i know the pull up side to snap that from ec8a and they will immediately upload it straight to the server and the irf live now the beauty of this which is why it is different a marked departure from the previous election in our country is the fact that shown you are seated there as the war coalition officer. I am the presiding officer. In the old regime, supported by those provisions, you will not have any communication with me. Therefore, from morning to the evening, where I will do the entire process as a presiding officer, you will have no communication with me. Now, what now happened under the current regime, under section 47, 
and of course section 50 that grants operational independence to the presiding officer as the manager of the polling unit it says that without showing who is the work relation officer speaking to me you have access to see the results that are uploaded at the polling unit which is live all right because of that when i am coming to present to you the hard copy of the form ec8a having regard to the fact that i already know unlike before where you don't know anything that show you are already you know uh, aware you have access to the result declared in my polling unit that becomes the real game changer in the current system that we have therefore when i come to you with a hard copy of course will betide any presiding officer who will call with something contrary because by virtue of section 64 subsection 4 of the current act before you share with the coalition officer before at the world level before you enter the uh accreditation data into the form ec8b from ec8b you are required under that section to to carry the beavers check the beavers look at the window showing number of accreditation check it with the result that's with you that have been given to you with the hard copy which must be submitted to you you have to check that furthermore there are also two two set set, set of people you have what you call the lga tech you have what you call the rat techs that are there these are layers of accountability now at that level you now have what you call the ILA, INEC election support uh, result verification system, which have to be checked before that data are entered into the form EC8B. It is only when all that process shall have been completed that you can enter that result. If you enter a data at the world level, different from what is contained on the form EC8A, under the law you if you violate that process you will if you are if you are if, if you are you are to be prosecuted you will go for a minimum of three years j term and a fine of five million and at the polling unit this is very important for those who are going to be a uh, presiding officer to be aware of the consequence of deviation from this procedure as a presiding officer if you fail to do so as a youth copper, you will go for six, six month J term if you are convicted of that. And of course, a fine of 500,000 Naira. This is the procedure that must take place in that area. All right. Now, Let it's interesting, okay. furthermore, okay. to add to this is that sessions, by virtue of section 61, uh, of um, section 61 of the act, the agent of political parties, they have a right to demand for a recount. That right must not be exercised unreasonably. It must only be if and when you find that in the course of counting, suddenly you said one, seven, nine, twelve. Of course, you will now demand for a recount. So that right is there. So this is what is in place. That is now a marked departure from what we have. The summary of all that I've said with respect to the process and procedure is that the system is designed to put the Nigerian voter at the center of our electoral democracy and put the candidate at the periphery. That is why there's moral panic everywhere today by politicians. And so all the shenanigans of the past where they don't pay attention to citizens, today the reason why they now want to buy vote is because the vote now count. If vote do not count, nobody will want to buy a vote. And of course, previously, nobody wants to pay attention to anybody. They will tell you that they have finished the election. If you don't, you don't need to vote for us. But today, they cannot say so anymore. All that is required now is full implementation because the devil is usually in the implementation. Once we get the implementation right with what has been put in place, nothing anybody can do. The chairman of INEC, Professor Mamou Yakubu, on election day, cannot help anybody. He cannot touch a document of INEC and sign on that day. A national commissioner cannot do the same thing. A resident electoral commissioner who are actually the one who conduct the election, he cannot or she cannot do anything on election day. Electoral officers cannot do anything. Presiding officer and all the other levels I've mentioned to you, 
they are basically not they can do they can try but every effort to want to rig the process to manipulate the process evidently will follow you fantastic now you you've you've helped us to make sense of so many things in relation to the possibilities now i, w I want you to highlight briefly which will form part of our uh the basis of our other, uh, other conversation is that the popular rigging techniques of the past is usually when people snatch the ballot box after the election they write the result and all of that is are all of those still possible so all those things are no longer possible you see and that is why i am so excited about this forthcoming election i have never been as optimistic about a possible outcome of an election that would reflect the will of the people than this current system that we have the current regime has been used to conduct over one of five elections now you know when we're using the beavers what you needed to do was just to swipe the 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 pvc and it will record all recording as have been accredited but it will be confirming that right now now the current technology and again sometimes we are hesitant to to speak into uh, we don't want to be too detailed about some features of the current system that we have but all i can tell you is that in the entire 105 election including osho state that which is part of the 105 elections the incident of the past where you snatch ballot papers ballot boxes all those things are gone because the unlike the beaver or like the or like the corridor the current beavers as i've told my people in delta in the river area like you know where you have river upland uh, difficult terrain where people manipulate i've said in the river area where they used to manipulate so many votes in delta that all the tilapia and the various species or species of fish that we have in those areas they will have to come before the beavers right now because you cannot do anything show there's nothing anybody can do Mi oh, mr again Mr. Igeni, what about the issue of uh, uh, children, uh, underage voters? Is that still possible? Now, let me inform you. Uh, probably I would have shown you, okay, cast your mind back to some of the pictures you saw on, on, on social media uh, of children of about uh, five years, six years, and all of that, that you find on that register. So it was because you had Section 53 of the Repeat Act that emphasized total number of registered voters. So you needed those numbers, all right, to fill the register, sex up the register of voter. Because on that day, those children, you saw five years old children, six years old, they don't normally show up at the polling unit without prejudice to perhaps other who are other under A, maybe 17, 16, um, some of who would have showed up in some part of the country. But essentially, the whole idea of sexing up the figure, I mean, of the register, is to ensure that you have large number so that example i gave to you where you have three uh, 500 and only 350 have actually showed up you now have enough to do thumb printing but that is no longer possible so you know what has happened now by virtual section 51 which with based competition on accreditation that is those who actually came the beauty let me inform nigeria and i've said this over and again that at the end of the poll on the 25th of this month a new register would emerge in the entire 176,606 um, polling unit if you deduct 240 that do not have enough polling unit and um, enough register of voters as have been announced by INEC a new register will not emerge that is why those who are making computation on the there's no more bankable vote anymore Sheung, Oh, I used to score so 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 another. Oh, somebody used to score this number of voters. It is gone forever, and that's why I need to the matter right now. Irrespective of what you have on the register in each polling unit, in a ward, in a local government, in a state, in a region, it does not matter anymore. On that day, a new register will emerge. So, instead of ballot box snatching, stuffing, they are gone. So, anybody. 
anybody that phone. snatch anybody that snatches ballot box is doing it for a waste. Is is it is a waste exercise? You are just exercise and exercise in futility because the beavers is now the primary source. Don't forget that the hard copy of the register is now auxiliary. Remember that under the carrier, that's why the provision of section 160. I was shocked, my bow marrow, that the apex court of our country elevated an analog, analog register over and above the the, the digital register that is contained in the car reader that was intended to deal with the mischief contained under section 49, section 49, subsection 2, that gives untrammeled power to a presiding officer that whenever he's satisfied, he can give a ballot paper. We wanted to show that what satisfied a presiding officer before issuing a ballot paper must be that the person who is before him or her must be the actual person. That was why we introduced Carida. Now, Section 160 of the Constitution was very clear that of all the executive body set up under Section 153 that with respect to the Independent National Electoral Commission, its power to make rules all the way, determine its own procedure, like the Carida, shall not be subject to the authority of even the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. How the Apex Court, how the Supreme Court, in the case of Yes or Wiki versus Peter side, Okereke versus Umahi, in the case of Ekweazu versus Oti, how the court further decided to close its eyes to that section is unbelievable. However, under the current regime, under the current, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, system, section 50 of the Act has granted operational independence that have now made the carrier the central of electoral democracy. Sean, I can tell you. There is nothing they can do. Were it not for the beavers, Obaseki would not have been a governor today. Were it not for the beavers, Governor Soludo would not be where he is today. Uh, ditto all others that won election. There is nothing anybody can do. Every attempt, what he can do, Sean, is to destroy the beaver. So if, for example, you collect ballot papers, you went to Tom Prince, you are like one who stole the drum of a community. Where are you going to put beat it? How can you impute those names into the car reader? I mean, into the beaver? How can they come in? This is the difficulty. And that is why there have been a massive effort to try to kill the beaver. They are even going to court to seek court order to stop the use of beavers. Clearly, power is back to the Nigerian people. The polling unit is not the only place where election shall be won and lost, not at the world level, All right. not at local government, so, not at any other level of collation. Me, me, this me, is the reality. Mr. Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 the bullets that normally kill uh, a, an elephant is usually not as big as an elephant. Today, they must come to the reality. Most of the political Egyptians you are seeing, with Nigerian uh, massive tunnel that we're going to see, they are going to overshadow Everybody, in fact, let me make the final point with respect to party agent now. Right now, the shenanigan of pulling unit of sharing unused ballot is gone forever. We don't even need agent at that pulling unit, but we need them so that they can be a witness to what is going to happen. Let them go and set up their situation room because they will be the first to have overview of the result before I know. Because, for example, as a presiding officer, whereas I need to come to meet you, maybe you are in Maryland, for instance, uh, shown which is the work relations center, a, an agent of a party will immediately snap the picture of that result and upload to their situation room, and they will have an overview of the entire result before I never will finish own result. That is where we are now. A time is coming, shown where some of you, in the next election, maybe by 2027, there about, some of you will be making full projection like the CNN. That's where we are going. We INEC has solution to some of these things, but INEC is being gradual in doing what we are doing. All we right. want to make this at least I is slow in getting to where we are. The ill of democracy will be cured by more democracy. Uh, Mr. Aguini, uh, I want to ask you a final question. If you can move slightly to your left of the screen so that you can be central into the into the frame of the screen. My final okay. question is to you is, the this bigger... Is yeah, I think it's fine now, yeah. So, I th I'm I'm one of the major problems that people see about this election is the issue of vote buying. I, I mean, Chief Afebalala said as much. Are you afraid that 
that vote buying, which is one of the reasons why CBN said they're putting in place this policy. Do you think th this could be a way that some politicians who are planning to rig elections could find their way into the art of uh, the process? So, first and foremost, there is there are this sufficient education and enlightenment. We know that poverty and illiteracy are the greatest threat to electoral democracy, to uh, liberal democracy. I can tell you here that currently in this country, there is anger in the land. There is hunger in the land. Look, the level of people who are going to participate in this election will be so massive that how many will you buy? You see, vote buying tribes so well because of the level of apathy many people were not showing up. So in polling unit where you to have 50 people now, you are going to have about 300 mm -hmm. to 500 people. So how many people will you buy? It's not going to ha it's not going to make any impact. They will try, but Nigerians will eat their money. In any case, the current CBN policy, why I urge the federal government or CBN to do everything possible so that I begin to inject money in and all that. You know, I've been issued, I welcome it wholeheartedly because even INEC as a commission, INEC don't deal with cash. We have been doing it. INEC has removed issue about since when we came on board in 2011. We don't deal with cash in INEC. We do on transfer. That's what we've been doing, paying our ad hoc staff. So uh, I heard when Afe Valoda says so, and I want to respectfully disagree with him. Not necessarily disagree with him. I can understand his pain because he himself is condemning the act of vote buying. So he came to the conclusion that, oh, because some people have such so much money, show, let me tell you, a massive blow has been done to the project of vote buying, even on account of what is going on. If we allow uh, any of these currents to be used and all that, Nigerians will not even accept that money from anybody. Vote buying will be of minimal impact in this election. Go and write it down. Show, as I speak to you, it has never happened in our country before. You cannot, you could see that Nigerians from America, UK, Canada, Australia, Malta, they are all back to this country, that they must take over this country and all that. And right now, the system has been designed to put Nigerian voters at the center of democracy. There is nothing they can do. In any case, my final point on the issue about vote buying, a directive that has been suggested, which of course I'm sure will be given to uh to, to to those who are going to be at the police as follows one at the polling units whereas nigerians are encouraged to go with their to go to the to the polling unit with their with their, their, their telephone the moment you enter the line between when you are issued uh your your, your biometric is confirmed and you're issuing a ballot paper to where you go to the secret ballot and come back to do what you call the uh, open secret to drop your ballot, you are not expected to use your telephone. Otherwise, you will lose it that day. You know what's going to happen? All the pool, all the security personnel that has been, that we posted in each polling unit, a minimum of three to four, as the case may be, they have now going to be charged with the responsibility of ensuring that anybody who is found within the preset of a polling unit trying to buy or sell vote or a voter trying to use that telephone, you are going to lose your telephone that day. You are going to lose it. So don't even try it. Then, of course, the security personnel will be held accountable. Most of them will be dismissed from the system. If in your polling unit where you have been assigned, there are incidents of vote buying reported, all the security officers there will be held accountable. This is going to be the new charge. So those who say you want to buy vote and all that, the last message is that Nigerians, Collect the money. If they give it to you, collect the money. But go to that very place and make a choice of who will be the best person you think should be your president, should be your senator, should be your members of House of Rep, should be your governor, should be members of House of Assembly. That is a decision you need to make. Have it in mind that you have the next four years or eight years, as the case may be. So, issue of vote buying, shown, I can tell you that it will have no uh, major impact in this forthcoming election. Mr. Mike Guinea, thank you so much. You have really inspired the conversation, and I guess that we will take it up from here. And let's, I mean, let's get some other views and get uh, Nigerians talking. Thank you so much indeed for uh, oh, weighing in on this. I appreciate it, Mr. Guinea. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Guinea is uh, a former INEC resident electoral commissioner in Akwaibom.
Thank you so much. Thanks. Let me come Thanks. to uh, to you, Mr. Idowu. Um, you've been on the field practically. Uh, Mr. Guinea has spoken oh. like someone who has been on the on the inside, speaking about the development of the electoral law and what we have now. What is your biggest fear in terms of the possibility of rigging? Well, I, I think Mr. Uh, Mike Guinea spoke eloquently well and um of course and i like the way he has been able to uh mount up a confidence for 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 horse and this election however i i still feel a uh, breaking election is, is still possible and all i need me to do or and everybody need to do is to see how we tighten the loopholes and i and i think there are about four major ways that we wish um, election can be rigged this time around, and that we, we need to quick we need to really look at look at that. Great. Number one, I, I elections can be rigged through altering of INEC processes. For and example, that, that and that is possible. Number one, by ballot snatching. Hmm. So now, we can see snatch ballot. Yes, Mr. Gino was and saying and that ballot snatching might not and be. And I, it is of yes. no consequence. No ballot snatching so, cannot help you. So no this ballot is, snatching this is, cannot. This is the issue here now. You see, he's made mention of something very important, that the beavers is a game changer. The moment the result is recorded and then it's transferred to IREC, there is nothing you can do about it. So what do politicians do? What are they doing and what they are they planning to do and we have seen it and we have played the scenario all you need to do is to make sure the result did not get into irec and the result is not counted he made mention of something that the power has gone back to the police unit and that is where the challenge is that is where the battleground is so you all you need to do is to look at the opponent's stronghold and make sure the ballot is not counted. The moment it's counted and put in from EC8A, there is nothing you can do. So and the scenario process. could be that someone is losing at a polling unit and he sees that he's losing. And, uh, you know, the brigandage that we always see is that usually when they are taking the ballot uh, box to where the result is going to be counted, they snatch it and pour it in the water and that result is, uh, uh, is cancelled. Yes. So before, before the INEC official take a picture with the beavers you are you see a possibility of the, manipulation yes. so that the moment you disrupt the memory of the counting or you don't allow it to be counted not to be recorded then what you have done is that you have enforced cancellation in that police unit hmm. so what if that is done targeted to specific polling units of your opponent this alteration of INEP process is also rigging. People don't know that. And uh, for instance, we have beavers in the kitty. We have beavers in Oshun. We still have polling units that ballot oh. boxes were snatched. So one thing we need to do, and I think we push you not just sit and uh, just to relax about this, is that ballot box is possible. Ballot box snatching is possible. Why that we enhance cancellation? It's not going to count for you. It's not going to count for me. Mm. However, my target is not that it's count for, for me, but my target is to reduce your vote. Mm. And that is one thing that is possible. It, I mean, and that's what uh, politicians and political parties have done to, to, reduce, to reduce the possibility the of the margin of, uh, of the opponent. So, so what can we do? What we need to do is to protect that process. Mm. To make sure, and, and I keep saying this, I just said it today, so where that legally or, or being constitutionally party agents are supposed to be at the polling unit and these are the people that who are also intelligence officer for for, for their political but the party. question is I how said, many hey, political guys, parties can afford here. to to have uh, party agents across all the polling units so it's, it's a lot expensive it's isn't a it? lot of expenses of, of, of course i get that I, I understand that but at the same time it is not only the political party that pay that bill Mm. Candidate pay the bill, political party pays the bill. So, and they also have people who take that up in their constituency and say, okay, we in this senatorial uh, district, you are deploying 108. Okay, we have, uh, I'm going to pay that. But that is possible. But what we need to do is number one, how do we checkmate the activity of the polling officials? I mean, so, of, 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 so of the party agent. So that is key. So, one, one thing that I see here is that if you vote, and you know that your party is winning in this polling unit, 
protect the vote. Protect the vote. You make just, sure. You just took the word out of my mouth. Protect it because mm. the moment vigilance be the moment some people just invade the place, take the ballot box, snatch it, smart pour it into the water or burn it off. What happened? Whether you are winning there or not, so far that result has not got into IREF, so far that result has not got into from ECH and SNAP, then that place is cancelled. So what now happened? Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. That is a one that is that, one that, scenario. that's a scenario that, that uh, that's dangerous. That and is which uh, uh and uh, the thing is that uh by 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 the guidelines of INEC and the and, and the electoral law, police officers, at least three of them in a polling unit that is what we usually see right yes, yes. and at the peri uh, peripheral and the perimeter or like outside of the polling unit that's right you have the armed, ha ones. armed armed ones um but usually you see a, a bit of disruption in the process mm -hmm. and you see uh, the only thing that the police officers there could do is to be calming people to just, say just pleading we we've seen that I, in fact i remember in 2019 we saw that happen in one of the polling units in the solo in lagos and then where that policeman was trying to calm them down and was trying to pick the ballot paper, uh, ballot box, and then they do another thing. It was just co so confused mm. because they were not armed. Mm. I think, I think what needs to be done, you know, I think what needs to be done is um, that has to be uh, protected. And we have citizens need to do everything within their power yeah. to protect that you've, just, that is bad. you've that just given us one yeah. one scenario just a moment let me let me ask stanley to come in here stanley okechuku uh, who is uh, virtually joining us from lagos stanley hi um yeah what in your own imagination or from your research have you identified as a possible rigging tactics of the politicians so as much as i agree with mr mike he has said so much and viewers is actually a game changer no no doubt about that but again i want to piggy based on what mr Idowu has said the major problem now is when an opposition is winning in its own pulling unit and is losing in the stronghold of the opposition what they go there to do is disrupt the election so like Mr. Idowu said, if before the the voters, the, the voter, the votes is being counted or transferred to the IREP and they cause promotion there, what then happens? You've disrupted the whole situation there, and that polling unit or the election there will be cancelled. So what is INEC planning to do? Absolutely, there's really nothing INEC can do about that. That's what we look at now, the security situation. Do I have confidence in the security for the election? My answer is not 100%. My answer is not 100%. And again, if we talk about vote buying, vote buying doesn't happen on the day of election. Vote buying happens a day or two days before the elections. And even on the day of the election, what you see is people gather around like a political party, but then a day or two before, They've already organized and agreed on how they vote. What they do is they come to various polling units, look for those guys who are more influential or those people who they call youth leader. Call them to the corner. That is two, three days before the election. Discuss with them. Tell me how many people you can bring that would vote for my candidate and how much would it cost. You get, they agree all these things a day before the election. And on the day of the election, you see all these people gather around as if that. They are, they are one party, but you don't know what has gone, how much has exchanged hands before the day of the election. So arresting votes, people who, who wants to buy votes on the day of the election, you won't see those people. You won't see them there. So the security situation is where I'm more concerned about. How will the police arrest the situation? What if the police gets overpowered? You put two or three, four policemen, you know, in various polling units, what if they get overpowered? What happens? Election will be cancelled there too. So, so Stanley, you, you, you are thinking that, or you're saying basically, that rigging has taken another dimension, right? And yes. It, and because there is even cash, cash crunch, uh, the narrow notes is not uh, readily available 
uh, in the hands of many Nigerians. So there's a possibility that we are not going to be seeing people doling out cash. Uh, uh, are there possibilities that there might be connivance before the election? What are the tactics that you understand is going on in terms of the vote buying, which you think maybe have gone digitized? Well, I, I don't think anybody who is buying votes wants to start doing transfer. They still will use the raw cash so that there are no traces. Um, vote buying has not gone digitized. The only people that will be paying, that will be making payments to digitally will be um, the, the, the party refs on that day because that is legal. Even INEC has said that there are certain amounts that the presidential election can actually spend on the day of the election. Um, down to every other election. There will be no digital means of payments. Cash will be made available two, three days or a day before the election. Mr. Ido, you see, you see the possibility of people seeing cash on their day of election and running after it. Because I, I see if, that possibility. If, if anybody throws up cash in the air, there is scarcity <laughs> of Naira now. So, <laughs> so so why that is going to work to stop vote buying on one hand, it yeah. can also enhance it on the other side. Mm. As a matter of fact, it can actually reduce the cost. You know what it means? It it can it can reduce um it, it reduce the amount people pay. So what it means is that so if there are if, if for instance if there are surplus of cash in the in the economy and you are still paying three thousand. This time around, anybody that sees 1,000 error is going to grab it. So that is another consequence of that. Again, it also means that, look, it, 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 um, you may not also have that cash to also share to a lot of people. So that may also stop vote buying in that regard. However, the, the, the other one I want to say, I want to mention uh, around uh, the, the INEC process is being altered. Uh, on that, you, you know, I said, and like about four. So the other one I want to say on that INEC process is, is deliberate, uh, de to, to deliberately cause overvoting in a particular polling unit of your opponent. How can you cause overvoting when there is People don't know that it's still possible. These are, Chion, these are scenarios we have played to see, look, and then we need to sensitize people. All you need to do, and that is why this ad hoc staff need to really sign oaths of neutrality and they have to be professional and they have to make sure they are not bribed they are not open to uh, to be bribed and they these people are protected but the moment so this is uh, this is how it works all i need to do is to pay you bribe you and just make sure that one or two people get the ballot paper to vote without being accredited. I only need to flash the beavers to you like this and say, okay, yeah, 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 you are you are already accredited. And I give you what's the, the ballot paper. All you need to go and do, because you are not yet accredited, the beavers did not tick you. So all you need to do is that by the time we are counting, we now find out that the accredited number is totally different from the ballot paper counted. So at that particular instance, it is over voting. So mm -hmm. people need to know that. And what is the law saying about that cancellation, whether one, two, or 30 is cancellation. Mm -hmm. So how do we protect the ad hoc staff against bribery or from the political class, you know? So all I need to do is just you pay the guy and say, look, three people are coming, allow them to vote and please no accreditation in the site in the in the in the, in the polling unit of your opponent and then the person just flash and then just put your finger and say put your finger and say it's accredited and the end of the day you get the paper to go and vote meanwhile that accreditation is not did not count in me, me, inside the, let me bring in one or two people on okay. twitter uh spaces here yeah. i see a few people that are being uh, activated as a speaker uh, Mr. Igini, I think he's still with us. Uh, I'll bring him back in because I guess he, he wants to respond to one or two issues. Uh, Mr. Activist, uh, activist Law, Emmanuel Owa, um, uh, if you if you are activated as a speaker, if you can uh, quickly weigh in um, on this matter. All right, I guess uh, um, Amosa um at uh, uh i tweet with naf uh please you can we can go ahead and speak now
If he's not ready, can we take uh, at Stardust 6 under 6-6? Six, six? I don't know if they can hear me, though. I thought that it would be good to get some of these responses of the people on uh, Twitter space. But they, they've raised their hands um, and what is going on. All right, I think, yeah. Who is on now? Okay, good evening, sir. All right, I think this is Umar, right? Is it Umar or, or Stardust? No. Yes, Stardust. Oh, Stardust, please go ahead, yeah. Uh, good evening, sir. Good evening, uh, Mike Agini. My evening. name is Lebade. I, I'm a... PhD students of political science from UNN. Mm. And I want to ask Mike Egini a question, which is relevant to one of my research. Um, is there, he talked about some innovations coming up in INEC uh, to perfect our voting processes better. And I want to ask him, in the future, will there be an introduction of electronic voting? And then will there be any introduction of uh, any method that would allow um, ad hoc staff to also vote on election day. Because it seems the current system disenfranchises the current IMEC ad hoc staff who may themselves be interested in voting particular persons. And if you look at um, the numbers of the ad hoc staff, there's a possibility that that number could change the results of an election. So is there any provision for that? Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Stardust. Uh, let's get another person on uh, Twitter spaces. I see um, Antin Epri at Omo Baba Leeds uh, on Twitter. Uh, I'm here. All right, please go ahead. Yes, uh, what a privilege opportunity to join in this discourse. Thank you. Uh, I want, yeah, I want to say something because sometimes, for many of us, more especially on issues like this, we try to be a little bit reserved because some of these things can actually call for further questioning. I must say because when you are able to, when you are able to expose or bring to bear one or two ways that election can be made. Then you can actually be called for further questioning. Yes, this is a Twitter space. One can also be very, very careful. I have my own reasons. I must tell you because I've also done a little research because I know how this thing plays. By special grace of God, I have always followed up elections since 1999. I know to the extent that people can go to rig elections. Most especially now that. We don't have a letter that is semi electronic in the sense that there are some of the processes that are manual and there are some of the processes that are interface. So, having said that, uh, I just want to say that the data pool of all registrants of all Nigerian voters, I want to believe that it is in one spot because I've taken time out to listen to. Uh, a guy in Guinea, which I know is an astute man on this election issue. I want to believe that the whole data pool is in one file or is in just in one package for me nationally. I just want to believe. The reason why I'm saying this is because you are going to be that Nigerians move around, but Nigerians move about. We still have a situation where we the the INEC register will say that you have a lot of persons on that age voters in it. If they couldn't do anything. A lot of on that age voters in that INEC register. Who we are thinking that by now it ought to have been cleaned up? It wasn't done. That's not our own fraud. Because the fraud system in, uh, in voting virtually stands for the registration. Because the moment you are able to build up your numbers, 
then you can do a whole lot. All right, that is one. Yeah. Second, yeah. Let me let me so that we, we take it um, uh, brief and short so that we can okay. allow more people to speak. Uh, let me see if okay. Samuel Falaye uh, can come in. Samuel Falaye, um, you if you are ready, please go ahead. Yeah, good day, everybody. My name is Samuel Falaye. Can you hear me, please? I can hear you. Please go ahead. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, um, I want to appreciate this opportunity given by Shane. Uh, I want to talk about the election again. Uh, one thing I know about this election again is it is only the INEC that can put an end to this rigging by this uh, vote buying mechanism. And this is the reason why I'm saying this. You see, why is it that when you when you get to a police station to vote, the presiding officer, after you've been accredited, the presiding officer will give you the ballot paper, right? When they give you the ballot paper, you will move into the cubicle. After voting, you will now bring that your already cast uh, ballot, you will now be taking it to the front. We are other agent, we see the particular party you voted for before they paid you. You see, why, why is it difficult for INEC to ensure that the ballot box itself is even in a kubiku? We are after I'm, how many, how much is the, how many, we have just the two sheets of paper for the ballot, uh, for the ballot paper. Why can't they put the ballot box beside, inside the cubicle, we are by, you, you can't vote, you put it inside. If they can do that, this will stop the vote ban because people, they want to see that you actually voted for their party before they paid you. And the only way they can do that is after you might have voted, you will now take it to the front. And the, the, the irony of it is the police officers, forget about the security, you will see that the police officers, they are sitting close to the ballot, uh, the, the, the cubicle. And if we have the police, three, four police officers in a particular police unit, why is it not why is it difficult for them to stay there why would they put the ballot box in front of the presiding officers that is number one they have the ballot box has to be placed in a cubicle in the same cubicle so that when you cast your vote for your previous for the person you preferred or the, the party, you will put it inside the ballot box. All, all right. Second, all, all right. No, let, let's, let's, Samuel, Samuel Falaye, let, let's move quickly to another person. Let's get some multiple uh, uh, opinion uh, because this is the yeah, essence. Please, so let, let, me let, me allow, let, let me allow, let me, let me allow, because of our time, uh, let me allow Omar Abdullahi, then I'll go back to Mr. Igini so that I can give some answers to some of these questions. Uh, Omar Abdullahi, Let's get your intervention. Okay, um, Sheo, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, sir. Um, one of the, yeah, Sheo, look, one of the things troubling our country is uh, implementation. And I'll tell you what, the last speaker, Samuel, I appreciate yourself for what you said, but I'll tell you that our problem is the security agent at the, at the polling unit. Uh, the polling um, uh, centers. We need to have not just a face, dummies, people who are as good as lepers. Because our Nigerian, uh, the Nigerian police, they need to do a, enough, a lot. Most times, look at what happened recently with um, all of the uh, political parties that were at. We had videos, evidence that had Nigerian policemen around and they did nothing. When we have dummies as police officers at our pulling units, there is no amount of magic INEC can do that INEC is not this, the police. And look, we have billions 
being mapped out for the police. So policemen, they do nothing. And it is, it is, it is painful that the system have allowed corruption to invade the system such that the policemen, even when you have issues reported to, the, to their, to their um, bosses, the responses you get are very appalling. So the policemen officers are the polling units they should enforce. When I next have, say, in the last elections I witnessed, I voted, right? The last election that I voted here in Abuja, I would tell you that we have police officers who said they can't do anything. So you can't do anything. The INEC, uh, uh, what they call it, the, the officers there will say, look, this is the way you should vote. You have to do like this, you have to be on this queue and things. The police officers are doing nothing. So what you are saying is that we should ensure, we should hold the uh, security apparatus responsible. And not, this is the new Nigeria, the have to have a responsible police agency, law enforcement agency, not just police, but you know the, the armed agencies. They should enforce these things. Right. Enough of um, allowing you to come on channels TV, allowing us to be on the space. We talk about political parties. It is the security agencies that should implement this thing. And they're not for this. Now I'll tell you what, on the day of elections, there will be vote buying. There will be cash. So the billions of dollars that this political party uh, uh, agent and co have been keeping you see on that day show you will discover you reported on tv that umar said this is that on that day of the elections you will be seeing new money original not even the year they'll be mm. fake definitely but all i'll right. tell you that you see those <laughs> out there in circulation all right uh, it's, I mean, it's, it's going to be interesting umar i'll bring in mr again but uh a few of the um of the conversation or the comment i would like mr again uh, to weigh in on is the effect of the Nara redesign policy and the possibility of the regain? Then I'll bring my guests, uh, 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 the speakers, to co uh, to come back. Le let's watch uh, these uh, these uh, package, and I, I will bring in Mr. Igeni to to give his uh, perspective again. Um, introduced in October 2022 into right? the country's financial system has since been unveiled, but Nigerians in different parts of the country still struggle to get the new notes from banks, ATMs and POS. The old 1,500 yes. notes are now? even no longer in circulation. All right, uh, Mr. Igeni. Yes. The there have been no, okay. reactions All, uh, from different parts of the we, country. It, it some, the political uh, class has also some been interference. at the heads. But yeah. none of the reactions hit hard okay. as the fast-spreading street protests... All right. Uh, we'll try to fix that. So, uh, I was trying to play a package to you uh, so that I you think can... It's over, it's over uh, now. No, no, no. It, it, uh, we're unable to put it on now, but let me get your reaction to some of the issues. I wanted you to be able to react uh, yeah, to, yeah, very, to that stuff. yeah, 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 very quickly. Yeah, yeah. I said there are boundaries of responsibility and accountability in election management. The 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 the, the role of the security is to prevent from the first outer layer a say, um, talks from coming in. The second is the sec second layer. Then we have the third layer. If it's possible for talks to break the first layer, second layer, and come to the polling unit, no INEX staff is trained to disarm armed thugs. So it got security must play their role. On vote buying, we have I have a video to show to you that uh, in one election I want to keep the state off. I don't want to mention the, the state where um, people queued up to vote. Then security were there. Those who wanted to share money came around. When they came around, voters abandoned the polling units they ran after the guy who came to share money, including security personnel to collect their own out of that. So what do you speak about that? Now, let me say this here. Um, the first guy, what's his name? We, we have to take note of what I've told you before so that let us not rehash the bad behavior of the past that we are not seeing at the moment because we are making some progress. I told you that all those shenanigans about sexing of voters register, have a big register, was because of 
sections of the law that supported rigging. I told you guys. So don't bring that here again. For example, when you talk about disruption at polling unit, can you provide example of where in recent elections, with this innovation that be put in place, where such disruption was an issue? I can't remember anyone where you talk about smashing of ballot. Those are the things that have to do with the old system, not the current one at all. All right? So disruption at polling units is not a very common thing right now. But I agree with you that now that we have returned everything to the polling unit, no longer have the world where people can now change the result. The use, polling unit becomes the center of universe. Well, that is where everybody is going to right now. And that is where we must ensure that we secure. Now, the role of party agents, let me say this here. Because the old legal framework supported the, what it calls organized crime at polling units, where they did what they call unused ballots. That's the business they do there. No longer sharing of unused ballots. As a matter of fact, you don't even need a party agent. Because I make presiding officers that have been appointed, they are representative of the Nigerian people. They are the trustee of the Nigerian people at the polling unit. Because all these party agents you are talking about, it's a huge additional cost even to contestants. And that is why you find out that in America, in other parts of the world, in the battleground state in the United States of America, the secretary of the electoral board in those places, they belong to Republican or what they call um, uh, the Democratic Party. For example, you look at the Georgia, the secretary of the board is a Republican. He voted, and I agree with you, that time should come where uh, voters, uh, those who, um, poll officials, who work in INEC, who are also on the register of voters, that we eventually are going to say that, oh, low voters turn out, whereas by our own system, we have excluded a whole, about one million people now who are going to participate in this election now. They are going to be excluded from voting. Security personnel who are also in the database, they are not going to vote. Soldiers are not going to vote. So eventually, when we are talking about uh, low voters turn out, we also must take into account this point. But here's the point I'm trying to make here. The secretary of the board, made it clear to the whole world to, to donald trump that as a republican he voted for him but that the vote of the nigerian of the of the american people you, you understand that the vote of the american people must be reflected in america you have what you call a multi-system in all the state controlled by the respective uh parties you have the electoral board managed by those political parties can you try that in nigeria you have apc pdp Abga and all of them in each of the state. Now, the electoral management body to conduct a presidential election in this country without work. What we have is a rogue system here. Uh, right now, our democracy has no foundation. In the 36 of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, you have 36 state governor who determines should be a local government chairman, who should be a councillor. We are not even talking about that. We are focusing only on INEC. And INEC is doing its very best. I must say this here. I am one of the greatest, you know, uh, who take a critique of the system. But where we are right now, these politicians, that's why they are panicking everywhere. Palo Boss Nation, forget about that. Forget about those things. Forget about that. We have done one round five elections. Can you point out to me where a snatch ballot paper became useful in any election? Not at all. Not at all. She pointed one to me. Now, how can citizens protect it? We are talking about citizens and all that. Because, I mean, sure you ask one of them a question. Okay, how do we do that? And all that? We, are, we are the cost of citizens. Harmless citizens. Harmless citizens. The best protection is the procedure that I put in place. As I speak to you, there are some provisions. If you have watched me, I said those provisions, I will never mention them. They are designed as shield to the process. But they act as a sword when you try to want to manipulate that is what we are putting there. In the current act, out of 91 proposals, the National Assembly accepted 48. The 48 they, they, they accepted, did they even know what we put in there? Did they read those things? Is that not why there's moral panic anywhere, all over the whole place? These guys are gone. We have taken the carpet, we have put the carpet up their feet already. You must get that right. 105 elections. Would it have been possible for Baseki to be governor today? A man who left, who left, uh, 
a ruling party and carry the mandate to another party would that have been possible it is because of the beavers hmm. that regime yeah. that we have had in place right now in the case of edo we up, we expanded the the IREP to accommodate over over two million viewers so people from edo state in japan australia russia they were able to see the polling unit as uploaded don't forget that when you snap the results, the form EC8A, the, with the beavers, and you upload, you cannot do anything with it. You yourself snap any document and try to send to another of your phone whether you can utter the information on that. You cannot do that. And in any case, even where there's a mistake observed by the raw text at the world level, for example, three plus one is supposed to be four. But if for any reason, or some have mistake that three plus one were written on the form EC8A to be five or six, and it is just a simple mathematical error. Once you made that calculation in that in, at the world level, that original where you found that uh, something, it must still be there for what we call a further review at the next level. We have created layers of accountability that is difficult for them to break through. That is why they are going to court. That is why they said they want to stop beavers. And I've said, as a lawyer, I can't beat my chest today to say that a, one of our colleagues in the bench who has been promised heaven and earth will not give an order to stop the use of beavers, even at the 11th hour. I cannot say so. I can't beat my chest. After all, Justice Ipeme did the same thing in, in 1993, where despite the decree, Section 70 of the decree, that said no court of law shall give order stopping the holding of the election. Justice Ipeme sat by nine o'clock in the night and give an order. That was what led to the problem of June 12. At the end of the day, another court gave an order. Don't announce the result. Abiola went to the court to appeal. They refused to accept his appeal for filing deliberately at the court. On the 23rd of June, an unsigned letter was written by Babangida, signed by Irabo, to the, no, not signed, unsigned to the effect that June 12 had been annulled. And what was really given? that they are not due to, have, to avoid judicial anarchy. Politicians will start it, they will come to the court. You don't know why in our country today, it is easy for those who do the wrong thing to be saying that, go to court, go to court. We have not got to a level where people who didn't go to primary, they are not having ticket as candidate for election right. in our country. So, right. yeah. but, no, 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 you have to take all the questions so that I, 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 all these things they are raising here, don't raise these issues at all. They don't exist. I can say that, I beat my head, they don't exist. Now, we talk about opposition losing and disruption. Listen, we are past that stage. You remember, the reason why we do separate accreditation and separate voting was to deal with that issue. Now that we have brought technology, we are now doing see what you call, we are now doing what you call simultaneous voting and all that. Now, on election day, there will be no movement of anybody. What you guys should be talking about is that security, the IG, must ensure, because there are some decisions that will be taken 48 hours to 24 hours to that election. There are no more movement anymore. In those days, people will move from where, from one point to the other, and the election is going to simultaneously. So there's no room to say, oh, somebody is losing here, and that you are busy in your own area. How do you know what's going on over there? This has changed because of what had been put today. Number five question, a day before election, vote buying and all of that. There is nothing INEC official can do about election vote buying which i agree with you we won't take place a day before that election of course let me tell you in 1856 when secret ballot was introduced in australia australia gave us gave the world the solution about secret uh, about uh, vote buying they gave it to what it's a rush for implement it now i heard somebody saying that so people can buy another don't also forget that even the current people want to buy vote uh, do, do vote buying they had the reason why they are collecting voters uh, telephone number was for the purpose of transfer. But when they now heard that, because if you transfer money today, if, for example, somebody is transferring to 200 people, 10,000, 10, 5,000 in a day, that would be tracked. NFIU, EFCC, ICPC, everybody's already, if I the banking, the bank has been given order already that anywhere you see an individual doing that. So that aspect has been blocked already. Transferring of, because you must explain why in a day, You'll be transferring 55,000 to over 300 people in a day in the election. You've got to explain that. So they have problem already. 
this is the problem they have now. Furthermore, you talk about mischievous uh, overvoting, uh, causing over voting. I agree with you there that an idiot on election day could just somebody could be a mistake, not necessarily it could be a mistake that, for example, you have already five more than 50 people who are actually accredited based on the correct section 51, but a mischievous person could just add one ballot to it to make it 51. The law doesn't say it must be two or three, just one alone is enough and sufficient. So one of the suggestions we have made to the commission is that if shown in a, in a polling unit where we have accredited number of 50 valid votes, and shown I am leading already with, it's a suggestion some of us have made, we already am leading you with, uh, with uh, what do you call it, uh, with uh, 45. You got only five votes and all that. That extra vote, I would say, okay, please simply just add it to Shehu, add it to Shehu and all that. It, instead of just only that one, canceling the entire something, please give it to Shehu. If they give it to Shehu, Shehu will only have uh, just additional one. I'm still leading you and all that. That's one suggestion that um, we have covered. So I just want to cover the ground so that, they are, you know, already you are, you know, Shehu, your program is where is everybody want to watch your program and all that so that somebody advised here that we also have to be careful some of the things we put out there, the behavior that we have, they were, they were encouraged by provisions of the law that are already out, let us not bring them back again. Because the voters are mm. out there. Nigerians yeah. are fired up. Mm. They have never shown this level of interest before. This is the first time. And all of you go and mark it down. This election is going to destroy all the old permutation, all the rubbish you be hearing people talk about. Every polling unit. At the end of the poll, there's going to be a new register. So mm. people are talking about bankable vote, bank no bankable vote anywhere, mm. no bankable vote anywhere. Yeah. Finally, yeah. on issue about diaspora voting, diaspora voting solution is already ready. I never before I left the commission, we have a template already. What is now left to be done is to change section twelve to amend section twelve of the Act because diaspora they are contributing so much that many of us who are right here in the country, so they have a right to vote. In uh, some other small, small Africa country, that is already ongoing. Why can Nigeria, that is said to be the giant of Africa, will not be able to do that? And of course, ad hoc staff will also have to vote. Police have to vote. In Ghana here, if you're having an election next Saturday, on Wednesday, all security person will have to do the election on Wednesday. But the ballot will not be counted until Saturday of that election. Police, military men, should be able to vote for their commander-in-chief uh, of armed forces. Then finally, on the question of why don't we put the ballot box in the cubicle so that you cannot show it to those who want to buy. Look, where we are today, do you know our kind of, all over the world, they do what we call secret balloting. What you suggested is what is done in another part of the world. Right there at the, at the where you made the secret um, choice you made, you just put the, just nearby there, you just put the, the ballot paper there. But in Nigeria, you know, what they will do is that a presiding officer, they can give them as many, they can they bribe them, give you two ballot paper or three ballot papers and all of that. You go to the secret place there, nobody is seeing you. What you do is that you are not going to put two ballot at the same time. Everything we are doing is based on the mischief we want to cure. Hmm. That's why what we have in Nigeria is called, called re-modify open, oh, no, re-modify secret open ballot system different for definition around the world. Based uh, on the behavior, mm. the DNA of the most more useless politicians we have in Nigeria, that if you allow that, you are going to have many people having ballot papers. After all, they already produced I, I, I next ballot paper. Some people are in the Senate today, they are there, causing all the, the results sheet they printed themselves. I never went to court to present our original. The court accepted fake one. Judiciary accepted fake one. This is where we are. So right. what now happened mm -hmm. is that is that what we mean by secret open is that remodify secret open ballot system is that once you are given a ballot, you go to the cubicle. When you get to the cubicle, make a choice. When you make a choice, let everybody down see. That's why the ballot will not put at the center so All that right. everybody will not see. All now right. what is expected of presiding officer is to fold it. You fold the ballot, you fold the ballot paper, the paper yeah. for the for the voter so mm -hmm. that when it's coming out, he must put it that way and drop it there. That is what we have done now. Right. I can tell you that we have made tremendous progress. What is now left is all of us coming together 
to make sure that these politicians, many of whom will not see again with the system, we don't see them anymore. Thank Come you so much. And yeah. The reason yeah. why people have succeeded is because of low voters turnout. But this time around, they are in for a shocker. Many of them are going to have what you call the dinosaur experience. Hmm. Good night. Hmm. Thank you so much, Mr. Again, I really, really, really appreciate uh, when I thought you were gone, you were still you still stuck around and you are able to help out on some of these perspectives. I still have Mr. Bukola Idowu and Mr. Uh, Stanley Okichuku still with me. But let us look at, uh, briefly before we close, the impact of the uh, CBM policy. Um, this is uh, Peggy's uh, package on this uh, issue. And I want us to ponder on it after we've listened and watched it. أشهد أن محمد الرسول الله Naira Redesign, a policy of the CBN introduced in October 2022 into the country's financial system has since been unveiled but Nigerians in different parts of the country still struggle to get the new notes from banks, ATMs and POS the old 1,500 notes are even no longer in circulation. There have been reactions from different parts of the country. The political class has also been at loggerheads. But none of the reactions hit hard as the fast-spreading street protests leading to vandalism of bank properties, ATMs, and the increased tension is clearly on the hardship caused by the Naira redesign and scarcity of both old and the new notes. The CBN has stated that the new Naira redesign policy is to help reduce corruption and illicit financial flows in the country. But will Nigerians survive these troubled times? Now you can use the phone to withdraw money in POS now. You are using, if you want to withdraw like 10,000 now, now you are using uh, 3,000 Naira. One collect our money, they don't give us, they don't pity us. Whatever you do, may we remember God. God, nobody pass God. Amid the Naira crisis, will Nigerians be ready to vote come February 25th, 2023? That's a that's a big question there, uh, Miss Ido. Yes, I I I I agree. That's a big question, but the, it can go either way. So that policy can actually increase voter turnout, and at the same time can actually reduce it. So it depends on what effort we bring into it and the perspective we are able to allow the citizen to see. Now that policy alone can arouse anger in people and they want to come out emas and give like a protest vote so we can that is a, another possibility and at the same time don't forget that has also reduced cash in circulation that has reduced um, in cost um nera scarcity so that alone can also make a lot of people uh to be disenfranchised because they don't even have uh financial power to travel or to relocate to wherever they are going to vote. I know people who are going to travel to go and vote in this election. So it depends on how they are able to get cash to also go and vote. So it is, it is, it is, um, the, the effect is not, we should not look at it one way. It is multidimensional. It can hit either side um, of, of, of the coin. And, and that is my belief. Hmm. Uh, uh, Stanley, uh, you are the head of operations at SBM Intelligence. Uh, I mean, <laughs> you, you, you and your colleagues, you released a report to say that this election might end up in a runoff. Um, I mean, weighing on what's uh, the impact of uh, the Naira redesign policy could bring on the election? So, as much as, um, cash isn't in circulation, enough cash isn't in circulation, we still understand that the, the, the digital framework still works. For people who want to travel, most of the transport um, um, the, the transport companies accept transfer. And most of them also have POSs where you can slot in your card and pay for your transport and move around. So I feel that cash not in circulation won't stop people from traveling if they have to go and vote, if they want to. The problem is, do they have the cash to travel? That is an economic issue on its own. 
again, people would, on that day, there will be no um, moving around. Most people, their pulling units is just very close to their home. People who, whose, whose pulling unit is actually 5, 10 kilometers away or 20 kilometers away from their home. And um, like I said, there will be no movement on that. They automatically have disenfranchised themselves, except that they have to go to where they have their pulling units the day before, or if they have a friend around where they can sleep, and the next day just take a walk to their pulling unit and vote. The cash, uh, the, re, the Naira redesign policy, it's a good one. It's just, um, it's, it's not something that will get the results immediately. It's a long-term result. Hmm. So l let's bring it home. You, out of the four scenarios that you are painting, you only gave us two. <laughs> Do we have the privilege of uh, hearing? Well, without explaining much, let me just mention, uh, of course, I mentioned the, the um, alteration of INEC processes mm. where I talked about ballot box snatching. Yeah. And I want to put it out there. We are just talking about the possibility mm -hmm. of manipulating, yeah. of rigging. We are not endorsing it. Yeah. And what I am saying is that why putting this out is just for Nigeria. Consciousness. I, we need to, to, be to, conscious, to be conscious. To be conscious. Everybody needs to be at a lot. Both election management body and mm -hmm. the citizen to be conscious. And uh, we, we talked about the overvoting. Again, is 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 the partisan access to INEC system, election management body system. So we need to understand that don't forget there are still people in INEC today with appointment that, um, uh, uh, I mean, that they still have the toggle of partisanship on their neck. So one thing we need to do is to strengthen this electoral management body system to be stronger than an individual influence. So that is key, mm. you know, because that is basically unauthorized access. When, when, when I'm a member of a political party and I'm managing an election, so that's that's that speaks volume but when the system is stronger than the individual then we are going to have an every then number two is the security legacy we can't over over emphasize that we saw that in osho in 2018 the runoff where security agencies at some point barred some voters from accessing particular polling units mm. because there have been a, a prior identification process so if you don't have them and cash if if you don't speak in a certain way they know you are not voting for this particular and they stop you and don't also forget police has the primary responsibility of securing the election so how professional they are how i mean um, is is key and we need to make sure that they are not corrupted in the election so that they don't grow partisan then the number three is the process of our technology are we be how 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 ready are we is is i neck for cyber attack and we can't overemphasize that enough so you have to be ready you know you have to be ready why you are putting a lot of things in place you have to build layers upon layers and then what is your response strategy and that is key you can't just say oh we are put in technology how do you secure the technology all over the world we still hear interference in election even um, as far as us is concerned and in other places and then the last one i want to say is this you can vote wonderful process don't forget what the ballot cannot give you is possible the court will give you so mm -hmm. how is can the process <laughs> also be rigged with through the judiciary <laughs> it's still another issue because you can say oh we voted and then you go to sleep and then in the next seven months eight months the supreme court now tells you who the real winner is <laughs> so what happened at that particular time everybody why we are also looking at the a security agency post election again post election again <laughs> so we are looking at security agency we are looking at INEC. i think citizen it is now the time to also look deeply into uh, 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 i mean the judiciary and that is key not because they really want to leave but it could also be there are also possibility that they don't also understand the whole process of the electoral act in terms of interpreting they did not make the law they are supposed to interpret but their understanding of those um, um, I mean, what the mischievousness that the, the old law want to cure, did they have that understanding? And that is key. So whether we like it or not, if you don't protect this whole process, now we are likely going to now begin to see, oh, we finished voting, but this is the will of the people, but the court is saying otherwise. And we need to really tighten these four processes because these are just potential and avenue, uh, avenue for rigging. Hmm. Sally, I mean, as we as we wrap up now, what are the other thoughts? What are the things that we also need to 
um, start thinking about to mitigate possibility of manipulating the election? Okay, let's. I'll, I'll, I'll take us back to, to the security aspect of it. Mr. Igini said um, in the other elections that we've had, the AKT, Anambra, Oshun, uh, and, and the, the other five elections that we had, that where was there an election disruption? It's simple. Off-cycle elections are just a one-off. Now, what they do is there's always a bombard bombardment of police officers or security operatives to secure that particular state for the election. We've seen videos before elections. We see the number of police that are being injected into those states just for this purpose, to secure the election. Now, we're talking about having a general election, a presidential election that will be held in over 170,000 polling units. The total number of staff that INEC is adding to this is about 700,000. That's about four staff per polling unit. Now, what is the size of the Nigerian polling? Oh, dear. There seems to be some uh, network issues. Uh, with um, the connection with uh, Stanley. So, 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 so please, yeah. if you permit me, I think I, I, I miss, I, I miss to cover I, the general election. One so, of the point, one of the point, and that is community consensus. Mm -hmm. We also see that it's also an avenue for rigging because if you are popular in a place, so what one of the uh, person uh, was saying on Twitter the other time about under eight voter, you know, understand when the whole community now months pressure. You know, uh, on, on the ad hoc, on the ad hoc staff and the presiding officer, that how dare you going to turn people back here, and then you find out that your safety is 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 is, uh, is at stake here. So we also need to look at community consensus in this election. It is one of the key things we uh, we need to also address. Voter education need to go on deeply. People need to understand the process and the implication, the electoral offenses, the incentives. They need to understand this because the, the election is not just going to be um, uh, because INEC has put processes in place in paper. But don't forget the new Electoral Act 2022 has put everybody on the same level. So what it means is that none of us, is the security agency, INEC, uh, judiciary, have used that that electoral act before. So all of us have come to the same level, and for this election, it's likely going to be like a trial and error. Probably we are now going to begin to go into perfection in 2027. However, uh, what the process says now, how citizens get involved and protect their vote is key. Where we need to shout, we shout. Where we need to escalate, we escalate. And it is very, very important we do that. And without lo losing any sector of, uh, of, of, the, of, the, of the country that is responsible for election, the judiciary, the, um, the, 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 the police, the security agency, the ad hoc staff, the returning officers, the technology we are going to use, you know, everybody, the people who are going to man the rack tech, you understand? All these people have to, be, our hands must be on deck to make, sh to, to make sure that, look, everybody, we don't even have in those sensitive places partisan um, uh, affiliation. And, and, and I think that is where we should begin to go, where we take um, uh, citizenship uh, 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 more than our personal affiliation. And, and I think that is where we need to be heading. If there is one thing that I may be in all of the scenario that you, uh, you you played up, if there is anything that scares you the most, what is it? Overvoting. Hmm. And we saw that in the Oshun election. We finished that election. Everybody got good election. But at the end of the day, a party was able to prove overvoting. And looking at those overvoting, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And in 744 polling unit. The panel said, no, that, that is clear overvoting here. Of course, it's on appeal. It's going to go on way. But don't forget that we may not have had finality on that case by the time we will be going into the general election. So because someone said, uh, maybe I should write this question to Stanley. Say, what money cannot do in this ele election does not exist. <laughs> do you believe so, Stanley? <laughs> <laughs> Money, money won't be able to do so much in this election, and that's the truth. Money won't be able to do so much in this election. Money might just get a few votes here and there, but money, that, that, that period is, is over. 
the re denial redesign policy actually it changed it changed that um, it changed that aspect of election in Nigeria. Hmm. Uh, your your final word, uh, Stanley. Do you I, think you, you, you I'm, okay? I'm so very let me let me let me let me rephrase. Uh, let me allow you to to have a, a, a very strong line of thought uh, in your in your final submission. Uh, so if there is one thing that uh, if there is one way any politician would rig this election, what would that be? That that that's giving you some kind of fear. Election violence by disrupting elections. That's my major fear. What can we do to that? We'll just um, keep hoping on the security operatives to, to be at their best practice. I, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm very positive and I'm, I'm very hopeful that we we'll conduct ourselves very well during this election. And um, the, 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 the choice of the people will, will be the end result. I don't pray that this happens, uh, Bukala. Do you see a possibility of postponement of this election? It has well, happened before. Well, well, I, I don't pray, <laughs> but um, for us, for me, I was looking at from 2011, 2015, 2019, that we've been postponing election based, and those indices are still staring us on the face. And I don't pray we postpone again. But if you ask me, those indices are still here today. One, insecurity and logistic issues. Those things are still here today. But I don't pray we shift the election. Let me see if I can take one or two responses from Twitter before we go uh, quickly. Uh, let me see who is there, who is available. Uh, Zamani on Twitter. Uh, Zamani of a papa. Um, I don't know if you're still around. Yeah, I'm still around. Oh, Sheldon. fantastic. Thank you very much for this Zamani, opportunity. Yeah, your quick intervention, please. <laughs> Yeah, um, actually, I actually want to talk about vote buy-in, um, um, and a very big one from uh, Mr. Aguini before he left. So I actually want to throw him one or two back to back because, you know, I've been a former presiding officer with INEC before. So uh, let me tell you the issue of vote buy-in. What really influenced vote buy-in, as the other speakers have actually said before, you, a community consensus is one, one big thing we should actually work on. Because me, as a former presiding officer at um, a, an election I, I won't actually make, uh, I won't actually um, talk about here, but I just want to make one or two facts that actually happened um, during this election going on. Community consensus. You will see area boys in this community, they will come to the polling units. They don't have, they don't have, of course, they don't have, um, um, what is it called, uh, cards to vote. But for the fact that they will tell you this person in this particular pos position is our person. So you just need to let them vote. So there's someone that has actually used his own um, card to verify the beavers already. Will not pass the same card to another person to vote without the beavers accreditating or verifying the card. And this is one, one thing that actually caused um, overvoting. Do you understand that? The one other thing is, these police officers we're talking about, I don't know, there's party party things there, because this uh, po police officer that was being put in this election um, polling unit, uh, they, I think they know the area boy, so they'll be like, oh, guys, yeah, just just give them a go. Just give them a go. So before you know, we start having issues of overvoting. And all of this thing needs to be properly taken care of. You understand? In the sense that, even our so-called our so-called security personnel, we need to orientate them very well on election, on how election should be taking place. That's what. But trust me, Alec has been doing a fantastic job on the presiding officer and every other domestic staff they must have um, applied because I, I knew what we went through before being a normal domestic officer to INEC that back then when we were actually going through all of this process. They did they work very well. Even pass, even we go through examination to pass through all of these things. But when you get to the field, you want to just to do your best for the country. You will see other people's 
that just want to jeopardize the effort for you. But at the point of the fact that you are, you are, you, you, you might be harmed or something, you'll be fearing, you'll be scared. This place is being posted, though. You, you don't know people around there. They might harm you at the end of everything. So you just need to succumb. Because the security officer that are supposed to protect you will be telling you to just play along with them because of the money you're going to get All at right. the end of everything. All right. Zamani, thank you so, so much. Thank let you me very see, much. Let me see if I can take Juliana Chukwedon. Ch Juliana, are you there? Yeah, Is Juliana available? Sure. Hello? All right. Uh, Wale, Wale Baba One on Twitter. You there? I want to see. Yeah, you. hello, Sean. Hi, Wale. How you doing, Sean? Yeah, I'm fine. Great. Can you go ahead with your intervention, please? Yes. Um, good evening, everybody. <laughs> Um, I just, you know, wanted to, you know, talk about how the importance of why, as young Nigerians, we are supposed to, supposed to participate in the election. Now, the reason why it's important to talk about this is if we focus so much on the rigging tactics uh, for 2023, then I see as young people, as young Nigerians, we vote for the person that we want to take this enterprise called Nigeria to the next level. And so, I mean, the reason why I joined is to, I mean, charge charge the people listening to say that, yes, uh, the politicians are going to try to rig the elections. They have their tactics. They have their ways. It's not today now. They are, they've they been doing this for a very long time. All right. Yes, now they've been doing this for a very long time. But, but yeah, as, as citizens that we are, it's a civic responsibility to, All you right. know, I mean, elect, elect the leaders that we want and, 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 and you know, make sure that our vote counts. So, right. really, that's my, that's my contribution. Th th so. th thanks so much, uh, w Wale. I'll take the final one, and this is at Sajay, 1985. Are you there? All right. I thought you were there. That would have been our... Uh, Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sir, sure, sir. Yeah. All right, great, great. Sir Jay. Sure. Right, great, great. Go ahead, oh, please. All right, uh, good evening. Thank you for having me. Mm. All right, uh, um, one of the key areas I see is uh, INEC and the police officers who are in charge of security. If these two people can get it right, then uh, election rigging will be minimized to 50%. How do I mean this? Sometimes you see a commissioner of a state or even the rec uh, delaying a letter material to get a particular location very late. And when this happens, people wait. After a while, they go back to their houses. They may not be able to come out again. So sometimes these are mm. deliberate by uh, politicians. Yeah. To make sure that votes from those areas uh, doesn't uh, come out very well. Yeah. Another thing is uh, violence. Like those of us who stay in the Niger Delta area, uh, River State in particular, hmm. we know how a night to that day you people are strong hearing people. about explosions. No, are not hearing about there, explosions. There, there are and no gone. ordinary people in River State, are they? You people are very strong people. Yeah. Yeah, they, 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 they are. So they are. So those online people will not be able to come out. And uh, when you start hearing guns, gunshots from 12 midnight hmm. on Friday, people will be parents who tell their young ones not to go out. So that alone is a way of intimidating voters from coming out. Hmm. So. All right, Sajay. We yeah. actually do their work. Yeah. Thank you so much, Sajay. Um, just, yeah. just, all right. Thank, thank you. you so much. I appreciate it. I want to thank everyone for uh, weighing in on this. And look, the most important thing is that everyone should go out. Let's all go out there on Saturday. There's no work. Uh, I no mean, movement. you. Eh? No movement. No, no market. movement. <laughs> no, you don't have any excuse yeah. not to go out. So, and and that is that is what we need to talk because absolutely. because you see there is correlation between vote buying yeah. and voter turnout. <laughs> one 
we need to know because politicians also don't have unlimited budget yeah they can't buy so when we come as emmas you understand how many people and you know so that that is that is needed yeah. however let me just say this that i also am very sure that we are going to get the security right um in this election and uh, because you d- you can't put up this cbm policy and then compromise uh, the security yeah. i want to believe that they are going to be very yeah. professional mm-hmm. but the most important thing is that citizen for a long time the political class have captured the whole process but this time around i think it is time for citizen to capture the process mm. it is very very needed let's take ownership of the process let's come out a mass and vote not only voting seat protect it because consciousness have been raised today on this on on this show so we know some of those avenues yeah. and we know what to do to mitigate so we need to also come out and protect those those votes and then it will be counted okay well, thank you so much he's the executive director of king pact uh, one of the election observer groups thank you so much for coming thank and you so much for me. um he's the head of operations at the sbm intelligence thank you so much and of course, Mr. Mikey Guinea, a former rec of INEC, who earlier was with us. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Well, here is my parting shot before we go. Electoral fraud comes in different forms and is usually well orchestrated, not by one, two, or three persons. A level of collaboration is needed at every point. As citizens, we must pledge not to be used as instruments of electoral fraud and that pledge is to the nation and many generations to come. As a responsible Nigerian, you can be a whistleblower. You can voluntarily provide useful tips to enforcement agencies to stop manipulators and electoral fraud perpetrators. Electoral fraud is not only illegal, it, ro- it robs off on people and it robs people of their legitimate choices. Electoral fraud undermines fundamental freedoms and the principle of holding periodic and genuine elections the global community and especially the continent of africa are beaming their spotlight on the most populated black nation and all eyes are on africa's largest democracy to deliver a free fair and credible election the nation should not be put to shame and for that not to happen every one of us has crucial roles to play thank you so much uh, everyone for being part of the show this weekend uh next saturday is the election vote right i'm sure kimbalo god bless nigeria thank you for joining us on this edition of mike on podcast with shayono kimbaloi mike on podcast for the independent mind